Hi, this is Billy Reader, and today I'm going to show you how to manipulate photos in Adobe Premiere CS6. Uh, lots of reasons why. First, I'm just going to show you how to resize them, and then we're going to go into what's kind of commonly known as the Ken Burns effect. So I just grabbed a few photos out of the sample windows uh, folder. Oh, look at that. Uh, so sometimes when we work with photos they they fit and sometimes not so much so when you pull things over into or photos or anything over into the source monitor it's going to show you the size that it the actual photo is it's going to give you the full dimensions but a lot of times if you pull it down into the um, program or down the timeline you'll notice there's a difference in size uh, and this gets down to uh, photo resolution and whatever your program uh, our project resolution set on. So what we want to do is resize it to fit, or maybe want, maybe we want this to look like that. Whatever it is, we need to uh, make some adjustments. So what you do, click on that, make sure it is selected, and then click the effect, effect controls. And if you notice, you've got a little short timeline up here. And this timeline is the equivalent of whatever clip you happen to have selected. So, and that'll become a little more important later, but all we're going to do right now is resize it. So, we we'll go over here to this drop down menu, this little triangle, click that, and we have position and scale, and we've got some others, we're not going to worry about those. Um, so, scale is really all you have to do. You can click on it and type the number in. I typically prefer just to put my mouse over it. You get the little double arrows, click and drag to the left to make it smaller or drag to the right to make it larger. Now one of the things you can also do um, if it's the right size within you can see the edges you can double click over here in your program monitor and you can resize as well. So that's an option. And so really all you have to do is just adjust it to whatever size you want. And that's it. So easy enough. Um, you can also adjust the position uh, through the same way. So maybe you want it a little bit larger. We'll go ahead and zoom up. But maybe you also want it over to the left a little bit. We can do that. So all I'm doing is over putting it over the position and dragging it there. We, so we've got X and Y axes. So we can go up or down either way. All right. Now. Let's get back to where we originally were. Let's go and drag that back. Smaller. All right. Now the Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns is a guy who makes some phenomenal um, documentaries. He's still around, but when you watch a Ken Burns documentary, you go ahead and get get set for the day because his are you know uh, epic, uh, multi-hour presentations phenomenal but often you know six hours long or so so um, get comfortable but one of the things that he uh, mastered a long time ago was the ability to, to kind of bring photos to life and the way he did it then and as far as I know he still does it today um, is he actually take a printed photo and you know, tack it to a uh, cork board and then use his camera to actually zoom and pan around on the photo and back when I got started that's how uh, I had to do it too because we didn't have all this lovely technology to work with um, but now that becomes so much easier so I'm going to show you how to do that right now alright so remember we've got this miniature timeline right here and so right there that's the beginning all the way there that's the very end so what we're going to deal with now is something called keyframes. And if you look right here on the left of these, each one of these, you have uh, these little stopwatch looking things. And these are how we set keyframes. So um, what you do is we go over here and we say, this is where I want this image to start. This is the way I want it to look when the audience first sees it. And and we can leave it just like that and we can say all right you know one second in or you know it could be at the beginning it doesn't really wherever you decide from an artistic standpoint it needs to be 
you can um, set a keyframe. And all you do to set keyframes is press these little buttons. And so I'm going to press position and scale. I'm going to leave the rest of them alone. And notice once I did that, it drops these diamonds. This is this marks the keyframes. All right, and so that's where it's going to start. And now I'm going to go further down the timeline. And we'll just call it there. And all I'm going to do is make it a little larger. And so what I want this to actually do, oops, wrong way. I want it to zoom in just a little bit. Now the, the trick to make this work is you do things subtly. You don't get really extreme because you get really, really weird results. Um, but I just want a little bit of a zoom right there. And I'm going to let go. And then maybe with the position, I'm going to move it in just a little bit. Like I said, not a lot. And now if you notice, it dropped. It automatically dropped another keyframe in here. And so now what we have is we hit play. Runs wrong. And then it made that really awkward jump because of the computer. That's what it would normally look like. There we go. Nice smooth transition. And then we stop. And that is super important because, like I said, it brings life to things. So, what I'm going to actually do now is bring in another photo, the penguin photo. Everybody loves penguins and koala bears. This is an exercise in cuteness today. Alright, so I'm just going to double click on this one, bring that up. And so, again, we have differences in sizes. So I'm going to go quick effect controls, motion, scale, and I'm bring it down. Alright, we're just going to call it there. Now one of the things that we want to do sometimes is if we have multiple characters in an image, we may just want to draw attention to one of them. Um, this happens a lot when you're talking some sort of narration and you want to single out a single individual and you want the audience to know exactly who you're talking about. So in this case, we're just going to say it's this guy because, well, these two are looking at him so we want to we want to add attention to this guy and so all I'm going to do is come back in set my keyframes and then I'm going to go forward a little bit stay right here again all right so now I want to make adjustments knowing that I want people's eye to focus on this guy and so I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to adjust the position just a little bit, not too far, maybe using a little bit more. And there we go, alright, so kind of using a rule of thirds premise on here, so we're focusing on this guy right here. These two are looking at him, so the eye points that way. And so if you notice, we've dropped our keyframes, we have other keyframes, and so now, can zoom right on in and it draws attention to happy feet so alright so now we have Mr. Koala Bear going into alright and that just brought up a pretty good thing right there this is a bad transition when it goes to stop like that and it comes to that and it does that it looks kinda tacky this would be a pretty good place to consider uh, one either moving these keyframes because that is one thing you can do um, go back to my claw bear. I don't like that, that kind of pauses at the very end. I can actually grab these things and just slide them over. And so now it's not actually going to hit until we get to the very end. And I can also make as many adjustments as I want. And I can add more keyframes and make it move other places. Uh, pretty much an infinite amount of time. So I'm going to drag that there. I'm going to add a little video transition. Throw a dissolve over the top. Play that, see what that looks like. Mm, eh, that's not bad. Could be worse. I'm uh, doing this again. I'm gonna go ahead and just move those all the way to the beginning. And my cross dissolve. There you go. Kind of motion into motion. 
Um, and one of the things you want to pay attention to is not make sure you make sure you sort of shift a little bit. Don't don't make it just everything going the same direction. So you want you want to add a little diversity in the direction of things. This gives it a much cleaner look. So now imagine your nice music in the background, Mutual of Omaha. You guys are probably too young to know what I'm talking about. Wild Kingdom. And there we go. So uh, now you're all going to be Ken Burns experts and I expect some phenomenal looking uh, photo documentaries coming out soon. Uh, until next time, uh, live well, edit on the beat, and uh, make some great videos, guys. See you next time.